red grouper fishing in the Gulf of Mexico is something that takes probably a little more hunting and searching than, than other types of fishing. Red grouper tend to uh, move around quite a bit. They follow bait stacks and they're not necessarily always on hard bottom or, you know, big red ledges, rock piles, that type of thing. A lot of times they will be there, but I think the bigger fish more so follow bait. So here's uh, a screenshot of a, a recent trip we took. I think this was um, late March-ish. And this is a big stack of bait, uh, 105 feet of water. And so you can see just tons of bait fish. And so a lot of times red grouper, um, hard bottom, you can see the longer these you know, dark colors get on your, on your depth finder, your machine, that's usually harder bottom. So, you know, rocks... Um, Swiss cheese bottom, that type of thing. And the red grouper this time of year, you know, late spring, summer, through the fall, will will follow this bait around as it moves around the Gulf of Mexico. And so this is, you know, massive stack. Usually it's a lot of bee liners, lane snapper, that type of thing. And this is coming up to 90 feet, so about 15 feet off the bottom. Uh, here's another shot, so 105 feet, a little more scattered this way. But just lots of each, you know, individual fish. And so uh, uh, one more shot. This was a little deeper, um, 110, but you can see, you know, some bait stacks coming up pretty high off the bottom. And so what I did is sent the GoPro down to just kind of investigate uh, what it was. Um, we had, a, you know, caught quite a few big red grouper at the time, but it's always nice to know, you know, what's down there. So we used whole squid. I don't know if you saw that. A lot of whole squid, bigger baits, just trying to get through some of the uh, the smaller fish that you'll you'll get on this. Let's fast forward from quite a bit. So you can see by hard bottom, some of the stuff red grouper's on. It's it's not really a lot of you know hard structure. It, it's basically these open areas of bottom with some rocks, um, you know, some slight contours, depth changes. But it doesn't take much to hold bait stacks. And so what you end up doing is kind of driving and looking around and just trying to find the bait when you get on some of these big hard bottom spots. So you can see it's, you know, a little bit of rockiness, a little bit of vegetation, nothing real crazy. But lots of bait. By bait, I mean bee liners. Um, is that something a little bigger? So there's something a little bigger back here. Can't quite make out what it is. Um, the deeper you go in some of these bait sacks, you'll find, you know, big red snapper. Yeah, there's a couple big fish in the, in the back over there. You'll find a lot of red snapper mixed in on these, on these bait sacks. And the deeper you'll get some, some really big ones. If you're lucky, you can avoid the red snapper and you'll get more red grouper. So this, um, you, as you can see, just lots of lane snapper, some mangrove snapper in there. There's tons of bee liners in there. Um, there's a little red snapper right there some white grunts and so this is what the red grouper are kind of following around these these big big stacks of bait that just you know migrate along the Gulf of Mexico and it might be difficult to see on smaller screens but there's a lot of fish swimming around on the back as well there's some bigger stuff and there's a nice lane snapper the lane snapper you can see the the yellow fins very tasty eating fish but the bottom is is nothing crazy it's you know, just just a big open area. And I've driven around some of these big, you know, open areas, like areas around the Mexican Pride. People call it Swiss cheese bottom, where one day you're catching a ton of fish on a spot, and the next time you go out there and there's, there's nothing. That's just because if you're finding this bait and all these fish, um, there's a nice mangrove snapper right there, you're finding these fish that's where you know the the biomass that's where you're going to get the grouper and whatnot out of the middle of them so i just wanted to kind of you know send the gopro down see what it was there's some cool little reef looking fish little angel fish and whatnot but i don't actually see any grouper in here it's, but that doesn't mean they're not necessarily there grouper aren't always the the most you know they don't really seek out the camera so as I start reeling it up, you can see some of this, you know, snapper is, is up off the bottom quite a bit. But nothing crazy. Just a lot of fish holding on the structure. And so what we do is we tend to send down, you know, a variety of baits. Uh, and we use a lot of, you know, this is a hog ball XL, two ounce. 
whole squid, bigger sardines um, at to, to start. That'll kind of get the, the scent in the water. You might end up getting pecked off a lot just because there's so many bee liners down there. But by the end, you're getting some of these red grouper coming in saying, oh, what's going on over here? Why are all these fish you know, eating that? So the bigger bait you use, we'll get some of those bigger red grouper. Um, so it's a two ounce hog ball XL with the, uh, with the circle hook on it. And then we also use a lot of just standard fish finder rigs. So let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see as this one is coming up, kind of what the fish finder rig looks like. This was on a whole squid. So braided line, um, fairly long leader to a weight and then the weight to the swivel and then probably another three feet to a circle hook. And this is a very large red grouper, especially for a hundred feet of water. And so that one ends up being right there. I mean, it's, you know, 15, 16, 17 pounds, probably fat. And then, so these fish are chasing around those bait schools. And since you're fishing a lot of open bottom, you can tend to use, you know, a little lighter tackle. We use a lot of spinning rods. They're not necessarily going to get you stuck in a whole lot unless there's, you know, sitting on some Swiss cheese bottom. So that's the one that was caught on that, that hog wall. Um, that one was with a pinfish, I believe. Yeah, we use a lot of spinning tackle, lighter tackle, just because it makes it a little more fun, a little more sporting. Um, so, I mean, spinning rod, it's fun. It's a lot of fun to get, you know, big group around spinning rods. So here's Tony and Caleb, you know, double header. That's a real light spinner, a lot of fun. And on these spots, you'll get the red grouper. You know, if the mangoes are feeding, you'll get some mangoes. You get a lot of lanes, get a lot of bean liners. Just a just a whole smorgasbord of fish, depending on you know the size of the biomass you're you're finding. And each day, each day to these you know open bottom spots are something different. You never really know what to expect, but the red grouper will will tend to be there underneath all those other fish. So what that is is a big big margate very tasty white meat one you know one of the best eating fish out there and they tend to live on you know that open bottom as well uh, so that's a that's a good size one and then caleb another red grouper as well so here's a picture of that margate it's a big one it's a good one it's the porgy family some of the best eating fish in the ocean and the rodan on the front of the contender i think a lot of people are, are going to the rodan now it's almost a lot easier, especially when you're fishing these bait stacks. They're moving around a lot, so the ability to move around is 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 very helpful. The bait moves, you know, spot to spot, and and chasing. A lot of times, if you get set up on anchor, you might get a couple fish, and then they shut down. And you put a lot of time into to get your head airing and your anchor set, and letting it out. And now you got to pick it back up. Whereas the troll motor lets you stay right on them. And before the trolling motor, what we would always used to do is, is just kind of send a few baits down, um, you know, squid, sardines, to just see if the red grouper are home. We would send them down and uh, check. If you get one red grouper, there's there's going to be more down there. If you're going to put the time in an anchor, it's, it's always nice to know that, you know, there's there's more fish than, than just a couple. So we would, uh, you know, just kind of feel spots out, spot check. And it's, it makes it much nicer. Now with the Rodan, you can just kind of sit and everybody can send a bait down as opposed to a couple to make sure you're not getting tangled up or drifting off the spot. Um, so this was that big one that, that Caleb caught. Um, you know, fairly fairly light rod. I think it's like a 20 to 50. You know, 60 pound braid. Nothing, uh, nothing too heavy. Makes it a little more fun. And, you know, the result is, is big red grouper. So the, the keys are, you know, finding the stacks of bait, getting bigger baits down in them. If you want the grouper, if you want the snapper, you can always, you know, target the snapper and you might end up getting some grouper in them as well. Um, you can fish jig heads in this. If the mangoes are there, they'll usually be on top of the bait stacks. So, if, you know, you see a 10 foot show off the bottom, they'll be, you know, right at the top of that. So jig heads with, you know, cut bait, shrimp will, will work fairly well for all of that. So that's the uh the big one. It's a nice fish. I think we ended up with our limit that day and just uh kind of moved around. We I think we got four off of one spot, three off another, then one off you know, the other all within a couple hundred yards of each other. Just just looking around and I always mark 
you know where those bait stacks are they they tend to to reappear and they don't disappear by any means you know they'll look the the fish will will come back to the same spots over and over there's there's no doubt about that and just kind of you know start looking around some of these areas as you're running you'll if you see bait stacks while you're running stop check them out you know drop a couple baits and and that's the key so i will uh, leave just some action shots i'll get the audio playing here so uh Thank you very much. Hopefully, you know, learn something. Go out and get you some red grouper. How are my balls? Oh, piggy? Yeah. oh, that's a piggy. Yeah, the net. The net is here, sir. On the old hog ball. Oh, dude, he doesn't fit in the net. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Good lord. All right, hold that one up for a pick. Yeah, it might be a keeper. Good lord. That's the biggest one you've ever caught. Come on, Tony. Come on, Caleb. Double time. <laughs> Just put that down for now, Kyle. Get that net ready. Watch your uh, tip. Color. We got a, is that a massive corgi? He's got a massive corgi. Here we go. He's so good, you can let that one in. Look at this, wow, dude. That is a big one. Jeez. Okay, we'll keep that. And then we got another, another nice one, yeah. Bite's on, baby, bite is on. You got him coming? Yeah. Sort of. Cal, how do I shift this to? You're, you're, you're good, you're good. Get some cranks. I mean, I put you in the land of the giants. Out of the hole, so. We hope. Big fish. It's a big fish. You broke off my ball? My ball. Huh. Cool, alright, more business. <laughs> Did you get hit instantly too? Yeah. This looks like a harder bottom right here. Big fish? Nah. Bigger than those other babies you got? I think it's a bee winder. On the squid, right? Must have just been chafed. Oh, jeez. Hey, you baby? got that net? Amberjack. Is it? No. No, there's a fat grouper. <laughs> oh, that's the biggest one yet. Oh, that's a fat boy. Uh, is he going to fit in there? Yeah. Well. Dude. <laughs> that's a good one. All right, Kevin, right, you need a picture of that one. <laughs> well, I'll one. do a picture of that one. <laughs> I wanted to wait till I caught a real fish. <laughs> That's a good one right there. That's one of the biggest.